Welcome to the seventh episode of Ask Your Vita series. Uh, my name is Alois Odiambo Lumutu, an air fitness inspector. Today we have a team comprising of airworthiness and flight operations. My colleague from airworthiness is called George Kaundu. Uh, with me again is uh, Major Retired Lazaros Kemei, who is our flight operations inspector. We are also with uh, the lady here, uh, Vivian Ongwai, who is the chief cabin, uh, cabin crew inspector. Today we are going to demonstrate how we ensure aviation safety uh, within two departments of airworthiness and flight operations department. Karibuni. My name is Alois Odiambo Lumutu. I'm an aircraft engineer by profession. Uh, currently I'm working in Kenya Civil Aviation Authority as airworthiness inspector. One of my roles uh, or the roles of the authority is to ensure that we are safe in the sky and the operators comply to what we give them as regulations. Now today I want to demonstrate to you what we do uh, when we do inspection of aircrafts. And uh, we are glad today we are in a Kenya Airways aircraft and uh, we are going to inspect 5 Yankee Zulu Bravo. That's what we use in aviation. 5 Yankee is 5Y, that is what we assign all Kenya registered aircrafts. Now when we do inspection, we always start with, what, uh, with the paperwork. In paperwork, there are documents that we issue as the authority and there are some documents that are also issued by the operator, but in compliance with the requirements of the authority. So when we come to the aircraft, what we do first is to request for the aircraft file. Like this one is the aircraft file. What we check on this aircraft file is if this aircraft is actually allowed to operate. And what we look at is the air operator certificate. Air operator certificate is a document issued by the authority indicating or authorizing the airline to operate with some conditions. We also look at what we call a certificate of airworthiness. This certificate of airworthiness is what we issue to demonstrate that this aircraft complies with all requirements of airworthiness requirements. Before we accept the aircraft into our country, we issue a registration certificate. It is called certificate of registration. This is a sample for this aircraft. Then when we go further, the aircraft for it to fly, we must communicate with the ground, we must communicate with other aircrafts in air, so we issue it a radio license, just like a radio station. This aircraft has got a radio license. The radio license is issued and renewed annually by the communication authority. And then we also look at the weight and balance. Weight and balance is a document issued after weighing the aircraft to determine the center of gravity. When you are loading the aircraft, it guides on the determination of the passengers' numbers and it also helps in uh, putting the aircraft on, on air or in, a, in an equilibrium. Then we have a document called a CRS. CRS is a document issued by the engineer and that is issued by the, an operator. Engineer who maintains the aircraft after doing all the maintenance issues a document looking like this, which is a CRS. CRS is always signed by various engineers or covering various categories. For example, engineer working on the engine will issue a CRS on his own. An engineer working on the airframe will sign an engineer working on campus, for example, will sign. An engineer working on instruments will sign before finally the uh, controller of the check or the, uh, the engineer who is qualified now to release will sign below here. On the CRS, we also have a period of validity showing that after how long again will we maintain this aircraft. We always give a period in terms of flying hours or a period in calendar days. Then we have a document also for insurance. The aircraft, just like vehicles on the road, have insurance. We also need to make sure that the aircraft is insured for the purpose of safety for of the passengers. After we make sure that the paperwork is correct, we now go and carry out physical inspections. We do cabin inspections. We do inspections around the aircraft. And today we will be doing these inspections with my colleague, engineer George Kaundu, who will accompany me now to the, air, to the cockpit and probably demonstrate to you what we do when you go to the cockpit. Hello, welcome to the cockpit. My name is George Kaundu. I'm an engineer by profession and I'm an airworthiness inspector in Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. 
please allow me to take you and take you around in the cockpit to tell you what we also inspect after the documents. Come on. Uh, now this is the cockpit of the Dreamliner 787. Uh, after the documentation that you are shown, we have other books which we are supposed to check that they are on board. One of them is a, a document very key, it's called uh, minimum, equipment, minimum Equipment List. It's a list that briefly tells the pilots what they are allowed to fly with and do not endanger safety of the aircraft. One of the key documents is called an aircraft technical logbook. This is a logbook that has very many details but of interest is what the pilot who has been flying this aircraft has encountered in terms of defect. He writes it down and if he writes it down the engineers are supposed to resolve those defects and sign for them. If there is no defect he will put, he will indicate it was nil, there is no defect on that. But other times when we are inspecting the aircraft for either certificate of airworthiness renewal or issue, we have a checklist that is KCA generated and it has all the details that are supposed to be checked in this aircraft to confirm it is airworthy to be given another certificate for another period of 12 uh, months. Equally, there will be some pop-ups in these screens. If there are defects, they will come in the status page. We would like to confirm whether it has no, no defect inherent, which are seen in the screens, of which the engineers are supposed to do them. And ours is to check that they are doing them as per the right manner, using the right documents, and the people who have done them and signed for them are approved to do that job. And that is what we call surveillance. Along with that are some other equipment which are mandatory and are supposed to be found on board before any flight. One of them is a fire extinguisher, which is right here. There is another breathing protective equipment which is normally there. It has an expiry date. We are supposed to check that it is valid. You will see later that there is an axe shocker which is carried on board in case it may be required. Uh, basically, as this aircraft is, this seat is the left seat, which is the captain's seat. The pilot in command sits here. His assistant, the co-pilot, sits here, and each one of them has their own controls. They are capable of flying the aircraft depending on what they agree to do. So among the other things that we are supposed to check, as you can see the cockpit is there. We do some operational checks to make sure the systems are working. If they have been checked by the engineers, we check on what uh, my colleague showed you as the CRS, that it has been certified to do this. Yeah, that now we are finished with the cockpit inspection. I will hand over to Mr. Lumutu, my colleague, who will show you the cabin inspection that we do before we do the external part of it. Thank you, Engineer George Kaundu. Now we also have some airworthiness requirements in the cabin. Uh, we start with the uh, toilet. You know, toilet in regulation, we must have what you call a smoke detector to detect those smokers who may want to smoke in the toilet. So we have to go to the toilet and see if the smoke detect detector is working. Mm -hmm. In the toilet, we need to check this the smoke detector. This is what detects uh, people who are smoking. So when somebody is smoking, it detects the smoke and there's an alarm warning in the cabin and in the cockpit. Then this, this uh, lid, this cover, must be able to return to avoid people who may put their things that can cause fire. So when you turn it up like that, you deny it oxygen and therefore there will be no fire. So aircraft is very, very, uh, has got same, so many systems to avoid, and, uh, to avoid incidents and accidents and implement uh, safety. So you can see we have a, fire, a smoke detector, but still even if you smoke and you drop it there, they still, you still avoid fire. Then we'll come, we have these uh, crucits, the crucits, they're supposed to be self-returning it should be able to spring back but this is because this is uh, the main door when there's an incident 
when there's an incident, these seats should not block the outlet. The slide is what uh, we use in the event uh, we crash land. And uh, they, there's no time to wait for somebody to bring the stairs to come out. The crew will activate the slide and people will slide out. That is how, so our role is to make sure that the slide is airworthy, is actually operational. And there's always a program of periodic testing that we ensure it is tested before we issue the certificate of airworthiness. Then if you come to the cabin, we have what we call emergency lighting system. Where, where, assuming that you lose power in the aircraft, this trip here is like a reflector. This one is a reflector. If there's no light, you'll actually see your way to the next, the nearest ex exit. Then we have things like lights. The lights must be operational. You can't just have a cabin that is dark. Every aircraft has got various requirements for the lighting system. I think from there we can now proceed outside and show you what airworthiness do uh, when we inspect the aircraft from the exterior. Now we come to the external inspection which begins at the radome. We make sure the radome has not been hit, there is no dent around it. You can see covers which are installed on this aircraft. They are supposed to be removed before the aircraft flies away. So the things which are mandatory to be checked as pre-departure in inspection are removals of these items you are seeing around. These are pitot covers to make sure insects don't get in and uh, create problems. After that we come to the nose wheel. You inspect the nose wheel so that we have no cuts or any damage that has happened during flight. There are doors which are access doors into the aeroplane. We make sure they are firmly closed. There are some other things you see which are looking like they missed the paint, but that is what they are supposed to be. Those are static pores. They are not supposed to be closed. They are part of the sensors of the aircraft to be able to know the altitude it is flying. From there, there are other panels which are vital, like this is the intake for the air conditioning. The aircraft is actually air conditioned. This is an inlet for the right pack. Now we will go and show you the landing gear because we check whether there is wear, there is any damage to them and the pressure is good. So these are the wheels of the aircraft. You can see they are really big. In here we have uh, the brake wear indicators which are these ones, both sides. The wheels Connection tubes do not have any leakage. There are no cuts on the tire itself. And... Uh, Hydraulic leak. The, the, the big things you see here are the hydraulic pipes which bring pressure to the braking system. They are the only the rear wheel which have brakes. The front ones do not have brakes. So everything looks okay. You can see here there is a, the normal inflation pressure which is supposed to be in this aircraft. These same pressures are able to be monitored from the cockpit by the pilots. They can be able to see or even the engineers on the ground can see whether the wheels are okay. Now we take you round to the engine of the aeroplane. This is the aircraft engine. It has a logbook. With the logbook we go to the serial number. So when we come to this aircraft, we go and check if the serial number is what was in the logbook. And then part number, you can see, this is the part number of the engine and the serial number of the engine. So this number must conform to what is in the logbook, what is on record. Then once we confirm that, we look at general condition of the aircraft. This is the FADEC full authority digital electronic computer. This is what is the brain of the engine. It sends, it, it knows even the load of the engine, it knows the temperature of the day. And then what we are interested on is if there's any major maintenance that was done, was it documented somewhere? If the propeller, is there any leak, is there any dent to check, to show that the aircraft is serviceable? These are the things we look at as the authority because we, as we don't do maintenance, we just ensure that 
the procedure and maintenance is done the correct way. So generally that is what we do in every part of the aircraft. We do similar inspection and then uh, before we issue the certificate required or before we make our recommendation for renewal of COA. Now me and my colleague, before we proceed, we'll hand you over to our flight operation inspectors to cover their area. Thank you very much, um, engineers uh, Kawundu and Mutu from Airworthiness Department. Uh, as we are from Flight Operations Department, my names are Lazarus, Captain Lazarus Keme, and my colleague Vivian Ngwai. Yeah, welcome again. We will take you through the Flight Operations Department. Basically, Flight Operations Department, we issue air operator certificate to operators. We are proceeding straight to the cockpit and we'll show you some procedures. Thank you very much. Okay, this is uh, the cockpit of the 787. Uh, as I told you, this aircraft is already certificated as part of the fleet of Kenya Airways. Now, I'll show you, having uh, the airworthiness gentlemen who have done their job, the pilots come in and accept the aircraft. This aircraft is slightly different from other aircraft. As you can see, this is a glass cockpit, and mostly the documents that are brought to flight operations to be evaluated and approved are supposed to be here manually, all right? Now, I am going to show you a few that we as pilots must accept. One of them is this tech aircraft technical logbook. This was done by the engineers before flight. Now, as pilots, we come and inside and check whether there's any defect. And if there's no defect, we accept and sign, and we'll be ready for the flight. Now, on, on the other hand, we also have aircraft certificate file, which must be carried all the time. And this is for the registration of this aircraft, like I said, is Kilo Zulu Bravo. These are alphabetical English that pilots and cabin crew and engineers know about. Now, one of the most important document we carried on this aircraft is the air operator certificate. Like I told you, it is the responsibility of flight operations to carry out certification process, which is a five-phase process. It starts from pre-application, then once we are done with the pre-application, we do formal application. We go to phase three where we do evaluation of documents now, whereby some of the documents are carried on this aircraft. Now, once the operator has satisfied the authority that they can do commercial air transport, we issue them with the air operator certificate. And as you can see, this certificate is certified by a legal officer. If this is not certified, it's a no-go for this flight. Okay, like you can see, this document was issued on the 30th of October 2020, and it is valid for one year. It must be signed by the Director General, as you can see here, Captain Gilbert Kibe. Now, this shows that this certificate is a legal certificate for the operation. Now, as inspectors, we look at the flight safety part. Part of them is the who are these crew involved in this flight? Are they qualified on type? Are they instrument rated pilots? Are their medicals valid? Do they understand the systems of this aircraft? And that is why, before we came to this aircraft, we carried out a pre a ground a ground pre flight brief. Now, when we are in this cockpit, we are ready for the flight. Now, in case, like I told you, this aircraft, many aircrafts carry the manuals that we have approved so that we see their procedures are carried out uh, correctly. But in this aircraft right now, as I'll show you, we don't use uh, physical documents. They have been fitted in the system. This system has the performance of the aircraft. An AFM is normally carried on board. But as you can see here, it has performance. 
These are the documents written here that were evaluated and approved by the authority. They are normally valid for two years before amendments are carried out. So we also have Andrew charts, which I will show you later on. They use Jefferson. Jefferson information is fed here in Andrew charts. I'll, I'll show you physically here. So here we have established that the pilots are qualified, they are ready for the flight, and they will request air traffic control for startup. And the captain will advise the first officer to request startup. Now, once we are cleared for takeoff, we always declare what we call sterile cockpit. A sterile cockpit means that no one is going to, to communicate unnecessarily because that's the time when everybody is concentrated in their procedures. Now before I hand over to our senior chief, uh, chief cabin crew inspector, I would like to show you one document that is used for en route that I've just shown you here is uh, Chaperson. Okay. As you can see, this publication is for Kenya Airways, all right? And it is uh, information supplementary. And this is the, what they use for navigation. And as I've told you, it is Chaperson. And it is valid to be used on this aircraft, Kilo Zulu Bravo. So it will give you whichever route. This is for radio aid that we use for navigate the aircraft. If, for example, here in Nairobi, we have a radio aid that we use for navigation. And it is a VOR, very high omnidirectional range. And it is name, its name is November Victor. Now, if you want to check the navigate on this aircraft, you go through the legend, the navigation aid legend. You will be able to, you know, if you are navigating from here to Dar es Salaam, it will give you which route, how long it will take, and that information will give to the cabin. That information will be communicated to their passengers. So our main objective as flight operations inspectors, we make sure that the people who are flying this aircraft are rated on it, that you know, they are following the procedures that we have, you know, approved as the civil aviation. Okay, that's uh, all from me here, Captain Keme. I'm handing back over to uh, Chief Cabin Crew Inspector Lillian Ongwai. Thank you very much. Thank you, Lazarus, for taking us through the cockpit procedures. Now I will also take the team through what flight operations will be looking for in regard to cabin safety. So once the captain gets on board, he calls his team and they brief together regarding the flight. As a team from flight operations, we'll be looking for what is the captain telling his team regarding the flight. We'll be looking for the flight time, their procedures in regard to, in case of an emergency, are they planning for alternate airport? Are they talking about what to do in case of an emergency? Are they discussing about how to make use of their emergency equipment on board? Are they incorporating the passengers who may be of help in case the cabin crew are incapacitated? During the pre-flight briefing, they will touch about the safety video, for example, in this aircraft. They have to play it for the passengers before takeoff. They have to talk about it. They will have to address the passengers seated on the overwing exit before takeoff and after takeoff, we have to ensure that those passengers who are seated on the overwing exits do not bring their bags down because that can block the exits. So when I get on board, using the LOPA, which is location of passenger layout, which is an interior drawing that shows where every equipment is. So when I get on board, or the team from flight operation will ask the team of the cabin crew to show us all the valid equipment. In case there is an equipment that is not valid, it's a no-go item. All right. This is the demo kit. This is what shows passengers emergency procedures upon this aircraft. The flight operations department, while carrying out en route checks, inspect that the demo kit is carried out while all passengers are quiet and 
announcement has to be made clearly that all passengers pay attention to this exercise that is carried out before takeoff. When cabin crew get on board, they ensure that they have the right number on board and they're all located at the right place so that when they're carrying out the exercise, they are able to reach out to show all the equipment that are on board. For example, this is the life vest, especially when they are flying over water. They need to ensure that all passengers have the information about the life vest, where is it stored, how is it used, and for those passengers with infants, the demo indicates that them they have to to inflate it before they put it on their infants. A safety card as well captures the full information that the demo exercise carries out. KC inspectors will ensure that on every seat there is a leaflet talking about this aircraft showing where the emergencies are and that with this regard our passengers are advised to look at it carefully before takeoff. We cabin safety inspectors ensure that the cabin crew understand their safety procedures to guarantee you safety while on board. The priority for Kenya Civil Aviation Authority, we oversight that the passengers are safe, the equipment is safe, the environment for the passengers are safe, they are well fastened on this aircraft. So sit back and enjoy your flight. That was a good show and tell. Thank you. Well, how did you join, uh, how did you qualify for where you are today? Well, I developed interest in uh, aviation when I was a small girl. Yeah. So when I got an opportunity to work for Kenya Airways, yes. where I worked for about nine years, yes. I then gained experience, because we talk about experience in Kenya Civil Aviation, Yes. for you to qualify to become a safety inspector okay. that we are. So that's how I ended up in Kenya Civil Aviation because of the experience I gained in Kenya Airways as a cabin crew. So right now, I am a cabin safety inspector. You are a flight operations inspector. Yes. Take me through how you also joined the CA. When I was in the military, um, I was trained as a air traffic controller. And then the t at the time, I went to East Africa School of Aviation, mm -hmm. which was under Directorate of Civil Aviation, mm -hmm. which is now Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. Mm -hmm. And I thought one day mm -hmm. I'll still work with the this year, which is now Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. Excellent. Okay, when I finished up my career in the military, mm -hmm. um, I joined the General Aviation. Mm -hmm. I flew for three years in the Skyward International Wilson Airport. Mm -hmm. And thereafter, I developed the interest of coming to Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. Mm -hmm. um, let me ask you, mm -hmm. now that uh, we are in the civil aviation, yes. and uh, you must be, you know, you must have encountered some challenges here and there. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me some of the challenges? Well, um, the challenges of place of work is whereby uh, our customers feel that their procedure, their work has been delayed. You know we have the service charter. Yes. A customer, for example, brings a manual and expects me to put a stamp tomorrow. I have to make reference to the regulation. Yes. We have to ensure that everything is right. Or if I have to send them back, they brought two manuals instead of bringing one, I feel it's a cost to them. I, and yet I have to send the whole manual back to them. Oh. for change so i feel like sometimes i sympathize but we have to do the right thing yeah i agree with you because yes. even on my side yeah when i came from the general aviation industry yes many pilots believed that uh, you know being an inspector in the civil aviation mm -hmm. you get into a situation where you become unfriendly to people mm -hmm. And uh, one of the reasons why I joined the civil aviation, mm -hmm. I wanted to prove to them that joining the civil aviation, because I know the background when it was this year, mm -hmm. is a place like any other place you can work. Mm -hmm. So I thank God that even right now as we are talking, yes. they are quite convinced that civil aviation, KCA, mm -hmm. is a place to work. Exactly. And now they have that uh, 
you know, when we meet in social places, they ask me, oh, is CAA, mm -hmm. how can we join? Mm -hmm. And I feel happy because I think my coming to CAA has changed the approach of the pilots from the civil aviation. Mm -hmm. As we continue with our mm -hmm. career progression yes. in the civil aviation, I know we have hobbies, mm -hmm. right? And mm -hmm. uh, me personally, mm -hmm. I like, uh, like I said, I like playing golf, I like meeting friends. Yes. I love playing golf mm -hmm. and I love driving out. Excellent. When I have time, mm -hmm. one or the other, mm -hmm. I fly out of the country mm -hmm. with my family. Excellent. What do you do? What do you Personally, like? Personally, I love the beauty industry. I, for my family in aviation, I have my son who is training to be a pilot. Oh, at great. the moment, he's a, at the university. I've told him just get, to get his degree first. So I want to encourage the young girls as well. This is not a man-dominated industry. We are here as inspectors. Join us. So, Major, yes. what do you advise the young aviators? Yeah, the young aviators uh, need some mentorship, you know. Um, they are young, you know, like we were young at some point and we had some mentors. So, uh, I'll advise them to, you know, to be disciplined, uh, be honest in what they really need. And, of course, uh, I, uh, your son is one of them, and I can I wouldn't mind you know taking him through being his mentor, mm -hmm. and uh, they'll know how as as uh, you know we, we try to lead them by example, right? Okay. So it is good to lead by showing them this is what I've done, this is what I'm doing, this is what I wanted to do, and I've achieved it because of ABCD. Yeah. Excellent. That's yes. a good yeah. advice to yes. the young yes. ones who yes. are listening to us. Yes. And I would like to add that to the young girls as well, this is not a career for men only, as you can see. True, true. We are doing the same job. Yes, yes. Joint operations inspectors. Yes. We do the inspections together. Yes. We cannot. Um, we complement one another. True, true. We read the regulations together. Yes. And we action what is right. Exactly. You know, when we complement one another, the achievements, the objectives of the civil aviation are achieved well. Exactly. So that's a good example in terms of what we do as flight operations inspectors. Excellent. And uh, I would like uh, people also to be free, free with us, mm -hmm. uh, not only flight operations inspectors, but Kenya Civil Aviation Authority as a whole, mm -hmm. because we also have our social media, mm -hmm. they can reach us. Yes. We also have, uh, we can be reached on www.kca.or.ae mm -hmm. even in case of any questions that have arose and they are not well answered. Mm -hmm. What do you think? Yes, they check on our website and communicate yes. through our e-service. True, true. You're all welcome. Okay, what about uh, our colleagues from uh, Airworthiness Department? Oh yes, Engineer Lumutu and uh, Kaundu. Come on, tell us something about yourselves. Okay, thank you, Lazarus and Vivian. Uh, we are here, and uh, my colleague. By the way, how did you join aviation? Well, it's uh, interesting. Thank you for that question. Sometimes I also get surprised because uh, initially I thought I would uh, I would go into industrial. I I, I I was a fan of automation. So uh, in my training, I did uh, instrumentation and control engineering, where the famous uh, East African oil refineries took me up, they trained me. But as time went on, I saw an artifact in uh, Kenya was that required engineers. And I applied and I joined, and that's how I got into aviation. My journey in aviation started in Kenya Airways. That's very nice and interesting. Oh, OK. Yeah. What about you? Yes, mine is also uh, almost similar, but me, I started from the University of Nairobi and then I joined uh, the military, the Air Force, where they now train me specifically in aviation. After that, I spent around four years in the military, Kenya Air Force, and then I joined Kenya Airways in the year 2001. As an apprentice again, I in the engineer training. I was trained for uh, four years as an apprentice and then joined the production. I've been in Kenya Airways, I was in Kenya Airways for 18 years. After that, 
I, I joined the Civil Aviation Authority uh, as an airworthiness inspector. And then I had a short break, I had a short break and joined uh, Rwanda Air as a, a maintenance control engineer. Uh, then I'm um, back during Corona, I was again picked back by the Civil Aviation Authority. And that is why I'm now an airworthiness inspector. Okay. Oh, thank you. That yeah. is quite interesting. Yeah. Equally, I joined Kenya Airways and uh, got trained uh, locally and abroad. After finishing the normal uh, internship of apprentice, then uh, we went through learning uh, the technical bit and we went to do uh, a license, an aircraft maintenance engineer's license. That makes you the person who can be authorized to sign an aircraft. It was difficult then to get. Oh yes, it was. I was lucky because I think I was trained under the wings of uh, British Airways who was going to train us because there wasn't enough training around then locally. Mm. Thereafter we picked up, we did uh, the group that was being trained, we did our licenses locally through Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. Then I didn't know them but they were the regulator as they are today. Uh, then the rest was to build experience. I came from working from the workshops in the components, came to the hangars, uh, from the hangars I went to line maintenance. Mm -hmm. By the time I was getting there I was a fully uh, qualified engineer with all the ratings that the, the, the company had. And I rose to the management level, worked for about 27 years in Kenya Airways. And then I thought there was still some more to discover. Then I moved to the Civil Aviation Authority where I've been now, up to now, for the last 10 years. Mm. Uh, uh, that, that, that's fine. What, what, are, what are your hobbies? Oh, yes, my hobbies. Yeah. When I have time, mm. I like being in the water. Mm. I like swimming. Mm. In fact, <laughs> I have grown up at the coasts, and I was a very great fan of swimming in the sea. But entertainment-wise, I am a fan of football. Mm. Of course, I won't mention this. Mm. I want to say my club, mm. which is <laughs> the greatest, okay. is what I follow. Uh, I like to read uh, aviation journals a lot, uh, more so those which are involved with investigative cases like aircraft accidents and all this. Mm. So, Really, I have a lot to do when I'm not working at the Kenya Airways, I mean at the Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. So I try and find time and do all those kind of things. Yeah, in terms uh, of... I know you like, you like a bit of that. Yes, yes. What do you do in your free time? In my free time, uh, just like you, I like watching uh, aviation-related uh, movies. I also like uh, watching football. But most of us an aviator, I like traveling. As an aviator, I like traveling a lot. I enjoy being, in, being airborne, carried by the machine. So what, 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 is, um, what are some of your best uh, uh, times in the authority or challenges? The authority has given me an opportunity to travel maybe around the world. I've been to places I never thought I would be. At one time, I was in Alaska where I went there to do civil aviation authority job and it was very amazing to realize how lucky we are in Africa to have the sun throughout. In Alaska you could see the sun for only one hour, the rest is the night. So I would say the, 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 the civil aviation authority has actually enabled me to travel a lot. I thought when I left Kenya was traveling was going to be going to be reduced because at one time I was a, a flying engineer. I would fly with the aeroplanes wherever they went. But still, since it is part of the business, I still travel a lot to go where the duty calls for civil aviation uh, authority. So yes, the, 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 the CA has given me a lot, of, a lot of room to improve myself. I've been able to create time and learn more 
mm. of what uh, we need to know in aviation. So, okay. how are you um, taking that? Um, I'll start with the challenges uh, as an airworthiness inspector. My major challenge is uh, technological change. We, uh, the technology currently is changing very fast and sometimes you, if you're not careful, you may find yourself lagging behind. I like the way we interact with operators. In KCA, you are not just focused on what you are doing as an operator. You find different problems you want to solve. Some you have never heard of them, but they are problems because they are with the various operators. Also, because you interact with people who may sometimes have lack of knowledge in aviation industry, but you have to give them service. That's a challenge and also uh, a plus because it makes you understand uh, the public. And the biggest challenge sometimes you find is their expectation. Our duty is to make sure the operators comply to the regulations normally referred to as CACAS. There are those who walk in into the authority expecting to get what they want and walk away with it. Instantly. But it is a process. It is a step one, step two, step three, all the way up to a point of being given either an authorization, an approval. So we find it very difficult sometimes trying to tell them, in as much as you are in a hurry to do what you do, there are processes to be followed and they may not take one or two days, but if you have the patience, we'll go through. And at times they understand and I find it very nice when uh, somebody has walked away, satisfies that uh, we've told them the right information. And this is like a daily business. Yes, yes. Maybe, can you because you know, you know as, a, as a CA, we are going to look at the compliance of, of, of the aircraft in terms of airworthiness and also compliance with the regulations in terms of the people who are doing maintenance and the organization where we have approved to do maintenance. But you find that we are not there every day. So it is sometimes difficult to determine what happened before you came. But uh, those, those are nitty gritty challenges because some operators uh, uh, may not have, uh, may not know what you are coming to look at, but they are in operation. So it may take longer time even to get what you want from the operator. However, the job must be done. We always do it. By the George, what is your license number? Because yeah, uh, thank you. My license number is uh, C205. And currently, I think they are almost uh, reaching a thousand. That gives you gives you an idea as to when I got it. It is sometimes. It, it back. means you are number two hundred and five aircraft maintenance engineer in this country. Thank you, thank okay. you. I, but now, I, but now, with that all experience that you have, what do you tell people who are the other generation like me and people are below us? Anybody who is right now in aviation in the industry. He is on the right path. He is welcome and he can join uh, the Civil Aviation Authority because we expect anybody coming into the Civil Aviation Authority, before we convert him to be an inspector, he must have the experience that is gained in the industry. So those who are out in the industry uh, get to know that our arms are open for you. Those who would like to join, please come. Those who are in colleges and you are learning, it's not like our time. There are strict aeronautical colleges which make you a better technician, engineer, and as you gain experience, you come to the CAA. The CAA will also take you through the inspector training programs which must be achieved before you become a full uh, inspector. So th there is big light in the tunnel. You are most welcome when time comes. Uh, this Aircraft maintenance requires passion. It is not something that you'll start and get what you want immediately. Because there are steps, you have to get uh, basic training, you have to go and do uh, type training, you have to do the license, and all this can be done. I know there's this myth that engineering is a challenge. It can never be a challenge if you have passion. So what I would just advise uh, the coming generation that I'll encourage them to join the industry and come so that when there's perpetuity in the, in the, in the, in the career of aviation maintenance.
do not fear to stop any of us and ask yes. what you want. We will be willing to share with you what you need to know. The passion, as he said, my colleague, is very, very, very important for you to have a good journey in aviation. Thank you very much. That's all from uh, Aviation Safety Team from Kenya Civil Aviation Authority. Uh, kindly continue engaging us on the social platform displayed on the screen and we'll be responding to your issues. Thank you.